So if you're building or you have a Turbo LS swap in a tight, small, compact area, you know you're probably going to have a difficult time keeping the thing cool, especially when it's sitting. My car personally is great on the highway, 185 degrees, 190 degrees, but when it sits in traffic or at the drive-through for a long period of time, the engine temps creep up. So I'm trying to diagnose what's going on right now in the car. So hopefully I will tackle that in this episode. So if you're into that kind of stuff, consider subscribing and make sure to hit the like button because it helps us out with the YouTube algorithm as well. Let's get to it. I know this is a burning question for some of you guys because you see the front intercooler here with the piping that goes into the turbo and I've had people comment and say, hey, how does that not blow off? It looks like it's barely hanging on. Well, you're right, under normal circumstances it would. But um, what we did, we put it together is we welded just another piece to the end of the intercooler so it actually would meet down and these things almost touch completely together to the turbo. Uh, minus maybe a centimeter for flexing. Um, so I've never had the charge pipe blow off there. I've had it blow off in some other places, but never there. In case you're wondering why I'm taking the intercooler off, it's because I got to get to the radiator. So I think a big part of my problem with my overheating is my fan is not only covered by the hot side, so there's nowhere for it to go in traffic, it's really close. Like I can stick my finger in there, but uh, it's just not enough room and I'll tell you what, this radiator is uh, New Age Hot Rods E36 LS Swap Radiator. They went through a bunch of different designs for this thing, and uh, they tried a bunch of different fans. So this is the highest CFM SPAL fan that they sell uh, that's low profile. So they make a, little, a couple of them that are a little faster, that push more CFM, but they're not as low profile. It had to be a low profile one to fit. Now, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit, as I'm going to show you here. So if I can move the bottom of the radiator up forward, um, that'll give me some more room behind it. And if I want to fit a, a, a larger fan in there, I can. So what I'm going to do is this part of the shroud or the radiator support has to come off. Um, I might just cut that a little bit. And I think I can squeeze the radiator up just a hair. Let's see how we do. All right. So I got everything torn off as much as I can. I have the, I'll show you here. So this is the original. Uh, this is the intercooler support. While this is off, I might actually just paint it black while we have it. But um, this is the original support for it. And I think I'm gonna put uh, the radiator uh, support on that because I gotta move it. So this is what the problem is here. So it's this right here. If I can snip this off, I can move the bottom of the radiator forward. Even just a few inches would do it. So I'm gonna look into doing that and then we'll take it from there. So that's what I'm talking about here. So obviously I'm gonna lose a little bit of structural integrity, but I might weld some brackets inside and the other radiator support that I have over there is gonna be better too, cause it's already stronger. So we'll do some reinforcements in other places to get it where we want it to be. And we'll take it from there. All right, so after some more cutting and massaging, see that there, this actually, will come out to there and just about be touching. So made a lot more space there and there, but as you can see down there, a lot more room. It was like not even an inch away, maybe like a, not even a centimeter. Now it's a couple inches. So that's hopefully gonna make a big difference. And I was able to keep the top in the factory location. So that's gonna be a big help too. All right, so test fitting everything back on. <clears throat> the hood shuts, that's a big deal. Uh, you can just see from here, the radiator is just angled a little bit that way. No big deal. Same as it was before in the factory location. But now, <clears throat> the 
there's just a, a lot more space in between the two. And uh, this here, I'm gonna bolt a bracket, similar to this tin here, but I'll get a stronger piece of metal. That's gonna actually hold it up, and I'm gonna put some rubber around it so it holds it there. And then <clears throat> I'll, I'll uh, fashion a piece of rubber, maybe a piece of slice of hockey puck, just so it has, and it'll actually rest right on this. Um, it's actually still kind of resting on the original uh, radiator mounts, but I cut them. Uh, but I don't really trust that all too much, but where it is there now, and if I hold it forward and down, that's gonna be perfect. This is gonna work out great. So, lots of other stuff we're doing on the car right now. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. So, gonna have to take the transmission out, gonna do the clutch after all this is done. And um, I'm still waiting on axles from Drive Shaft Shop, cause we're gonna put the 210 millimeter differential in. I got M3 rear trailing arms. Uh, I got these different uh, lower control arms are adjustable. Cheapos from eBay, I'll put a link to them in the description below. They were great though. Um, they're a lot better. Even though they're cheap eBay ones, they're a hell of a lot stronger than the original ones. That sway bar is off the 325 IS. I just painted it red to make it look nice. And that's the rally road bracket. So lots and lots of work going on to this car. All right, so I literally sliced a hockey puck in thirds. It's about a third of a hockey puck. So the radiator is gonna rest right on this. I'm gonna get a different bolt. I just have that there for, that's all I had lying around. Um, but I repainted the uh, intercooler slash radiator half support. And while I was at it, I just decided to repaint this cause it had some rust on it. And it was old and scratched from doing the, the swap. So I repainted it black. And thankfully this black is basically every black. So gonna be really hard to recognize the difference, uh, especially the engine bay, but it's gonna look super clean when it's back on. All right, so now I have the front clip back on. See here, this looks a hell of a lot nicer. Um, and as you see down below, it's resting on a hockey puck, um, which is pretty good. And then here on this side, just moved it up just a hair. And then over here, you can see it's moved up. But now it's a little bit on an angle. So if you look straight down into it, I have that much room. So I gotta finish buttoning up the rest of the front end, but that is significantly more than there was before. Hopefully that helps with my, uh, you know, my coolant temperatures. All right, you guys win. There I said it. All right, I took off the one piece eBay headlights with clear corners they work great and after refinishing and wet sanding these down uh they look a hell of a lot better than they did i might even hit them again but they're significantly better than what they were they were really foggy really bad so yes i like these ones better in the long run even though that, those were cool and different um I think I might auction those off or raffle them off or something on the channel. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. I'll, you know, free shipping, whatever. I'll ship them out to you. Uh, but you know, they, they work really good. Um, or they're like 125, 130 bucks. So hit the subscribe button, stay up to date because probably gonna raffle them off. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.